temperature, especially since we did the boiling point last week. Yeah. Uh, maybe we'll change that if it's far off. Initial temperature of the water, everyone has recorded somewhere around 22 degrees Celsius. What is it today? 24.8 for us. Yeah, well, actually, I'm not going to turn on the air conditioning until we're done with the lab because changing air like temperature is bad thing right now. So, hot today. So we're boiling, we're boiling. And you really can't do anything until we get some data, so. Alright, so you can kind of um, think through like the movement you're going to do. Somebody's going to grab the thermometer in the lid, you're going to hold it, um, I'm going to come in, and then we're going to kind of one, two, three, go. I'm going to, here's the big source of error, I'm going to move the piece of metal out of the boiling water through the air into the calorimeter as fast as I can. But it can lose some heat as it flies through the air into the calorimeter. So that's the problem with this lab. Uh, and that's one of our errors. So you're going to get the lid on as quickly as you can and then swirl to distribute the heat from the metal into the water. So, assuming all goes to plan, I don't know what okay. our procedure is going to go like this hot metal. Moved to calorimeter. Now make sure you write down what really happens if I drop the metal on the floor or you know something like that. We need to definitely record what happens. Oh wait, we need a. We're gonna have to wedge a step in because what did you guys just do with your thermometers? Mm -hmm. Initial yeah. temperature of the water. Initial temperature, maybe. Did initial we? Is that what step four was? Nope. Oh, we did that. Yay. Okay. So this will be six, seven, final temp of metal and water and calorimeter was recorded. And then all on to the calculations, and we're still not boiling. Amazing. I do want to turn on the fan. I don't think that'll change the temperature in the room too much. And I can lower the fan speed if that should help reduce air. It should be okay. I don't think it's directly hitting anyone's stuff. Okay. Alrighty. Oh, now we're at a rolling boil, so we've got two minutes of this, and then we'll take a reading and make sure it's pretty close to 100, or we'll change our data point. Uh, you guys should take one last reading and make sure that your temperature inside your calorimeter has not changed since last reading, because it shouldn't be changing, but if it did, then you want to use the new one as your initial temperature. 24-ish Celsius. to let the bulb and the thermometer touch anything. Yep, it's still going up. We're almost 
to 94. Let's give it 30 seconds and see if it changes. We'll learn a lot about boiling this year. Right now, your definition of boiling would be, what do you think? Water, degrees Celsius during phase change. Okay, so where that boiling is when a liquid is converting to a gas. It doesn't have to be water, anything could boil. It just, like if the alcohol in my bin would boil at a lower temperature than the water, and this lead here will obviously boil at a much higher temperature. Oh, oh not guess. an unknown metal anyway. I thought it was lead. It it's a lead fishing weight. So. I thought it was lead. <laughs> okay, we are. Okay. We're right at 97 lead. Celsius, and we're stopped. So our metal's at 97 Celsius. That's our final, our initial temperature for the metal. Everyone, grab the lid off your calorimeter. Be ready to open it. And then close it up quickly. Shoot, wait. <laughs> yeah, I know. This is the tricky part. And keep your thermometer right in the hole. You can be ready to just slam it on there and gently swirl. You don't want to sure splash it. Like how do you how do you swirl it? <laughs> like I'll yeah, you you're in the middle. Make sure the lid gets closed quickly. This is the point. All right, so closed. Good. And you don't want the thermometer to be right on the metal, although it shouldn't matter in the end. Awesome. <laughs> Ready? Mm -hmm. Beautiful. And gently swirling. Okay, so we're swirling, just gently keeping, you can just do the whole calorimeter, like keep the calorimeter kind of flat on the table. Keep the hole plugged as much as you can with the thermometer because that's a place where heat can be lost and we really don't want any heat to be lost. See how I'm just kind of swirling? But what you don't want is to swirl so much that water pops up out of your hole. Oh, you're plugging with your thumb. That's good. You're a good insulator. <laughs> Tape really isn't the greatest of insulators, but at least there's, it's something. There's like hole in the middle. So, so, yeah, oh, swirling, yeah, swirling. Like, I should have replaced that lid. So, sources of error. We've already talked about metal coming through the air. It can cool off from the hot water to the calorimeter. And, of course, heat loss um, through the hole. The thermometer can only do so much. So swirl and swirl. I'll throw something more interesting than me. We're swirling the calorimeter. Did you get like metal going into the calorimeter? I hope. Okay. Our calorimeters swirling. And just watch the thermometer. You don't need like temperature readings every few seconds. What you need to notice is when it's actually stopped changing temperature and then you take a reading. So if like a minute goes by and you haven't changed temperature anymore, then you can take a reading. I actually have a list of things for you to memorize, which while you're doing that, I will put on the board. I was looking at this side, I was like, oh.
Should we be trying to keep the thermometer away from the side of the calorimeter? It should be okay because everything should come to the same, same temperature. temperature. <laughs> oh, should we treat that I remember like the other equation, like C equals 5 ninths F plus or minus 32, that's fine. They're going to get you the same place in the end. Uh, but that's a list of what you should memorize. Temperature is not moving really anymore. Okay. If your temperature is stopped moving, then take your reading. Memorize these. Here is the procedure or some kind of close to the procedure. It does not change a whole lot. Water takes a huge amount of energy to change temperature. You can give it like that giant piece of hot metal that outweighs it by a lot, or comes close to its weight, I guess it doesn't outweigh it, and still not change its temperature more than a few minutes. What did you say? Let me check this. I'm getting like 25 point hours. Could this be like that? Is that? For the final temperature? Because it hasn't been moving. Yeah, 26 though. Yes. So you should have filled in your uh, final temperature of metal and water probably by now. Uh, so in the calculation section on this page, uh, the first thing you want you to do is find delta T for the metal chunk and then delta T for the water. So we'll do that now. Delta T. I'm just going to use kind of hypothetical numbers. You need to use your group's data, which will be different for all four groups, probably. So, delta T equals 
heat and or the metal drops in temperature so it's negative, the water gains that. Oh yeah. So it's gonna be positive. And that is a really big place where people end up making mistakes during these problems. So for the metal, I got negative 72.0, and for the water, I got 1.2. Yep, I'll be together. Does that sound right? Yeah. I don't need that. I didn't move anymore. Did it move anymore? No, it's at 20. I mean, the color around is keeping the heat. It's just always good. The metal is supposed to be 100. You can take them off. We're done boiling. The metal wasn't 100 degrees. Sorry, we don't need to watch people make calculations.